Good evening and welcome to the Queen Anne's County Public School Board of Education August meeting. Um, at this time, could I get a motion to go into closed session? Mo uh, motion to move into closed session as permitted by Section 3-305B of the General Provision Article of the Annotated Code of Maryland. I move that we go into closed session to discuss personnel, HR report, administrative items, back to school supplies for students, update board on the recent settlement, transportation report, date for an appeal, minutes from July 12th, and upcoming meeting events. Thank you. I have a motion. Can I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments regarding the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote to go into closed session. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, and we will be back at 6 o'clock. Welcome to the Board of Education meeting. This is a public meeting that is being videotaped for county citizens to review on QAC TV 7, a local cable station. The agenda is available on the information table. During this meeting, we ask that you turn off your cell phones and hold personal conversations outside of the meeting room. We will now be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by our student board member, Sarah Schauber. Good evening and welcome to the August Queen Anne's County Public Schools Board of Education meeting. Um, at this time, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? I move the, that we approve the agenda. I have a motion to have second. a second. Motion and a second. Any questions or comments regarding the, mo the, <laughs> the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote to approve the agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Next, I need a motion to approve the minutes of open and closed sessions of July 12th. Second. So or moved. so moved. Sorry. I second it. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments regarding the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote to approve the minutes for open and closed session July 12th. All in favor say aye. 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 All, all opposed? The ayes <coughs> have it. Moving on on our agenda, we have the community involvement. Are there um, any board members that would like to um, address the community on things that they've done recently? Or Well, I, um, Sh Sharon and I went to uh, the first meet and greet for the new superintendent um, it held at Kennard Alumni Association building. Um, it was uh, it was attended by many folks, and um, they were extremely pleased to have our new superintendent on board. And um, it was a, her opportunity to speak and and also to spend a little time with um, a variety of members of the community, um, parents and community members and teachers. And for me, one of the more impressive things was there were several representatives there from previous tours of duty that the superintendent had from uh, Anne Arundel County and even Richmond, Virginia showed up in support of the new superintendent. So that speaks volumes to the superintendent we've received. So I just thought it was a, a great event. Thank you. It was, and I second that. Unfortunately, I won't be able to attend the one in Sudlersville on the 14th. Um, I'll be away visiting family out of state. But I wish you good luck. I hope you have as good a turnout there as you did in Centerville. And we have another one in the future, I think, further in the southern part of the county. So I encourage everyone <coughs> out to come out. And you don't have to stay the whole time. Um, Dr. Kane makes a point to move around the room and speak to every single one of you. So it's a great time to meet her personally. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is the superintendent's report. So activity in the community, I was warmly welcomed at the meet and greet. It was fabulous. I'm glad that you were able to be there. And we do have two more scheduled. So we have August 14th, we'll be at Sudlersville Middle School. And we have August the 21st, where we'll be at Stevensville Middle School. All, both of those will be from 6 to 730. We've all, I've also had an opportunity to meet with several members of the community. I've had an opportunity to meet with our health department, Dr. Um, Siatola, thank you very much, and some of his staff, some folks from the um, 
the Centerville Police Department. I've had an opportunity to meet with some individual community members, Chamber of Commerce, lots and lots of different people and different groups, and it has been an absolute pleasure. So I've, I've been getting my feet wet and getting out in the community. Tonight, I'm grateful to uh, Sid Pender, <clears throat> our uh, Director for Operations, who was going to be at the town hall meeting in um, Kent Island, and we extend our, our, our deepest uh, sense of care for those folks who are on Kent Island and have been affected by the tornado. So we are here to support those folks. We, they are our family, and, and we want to do whatever it is that we can do to support the families. And in some cases, I believe we have a couple of employees who are living on Kent Island may have been affected. So we've done a little poll. We've uh, taken up some information about how many families may be collected. We found that there are, at this point, about 37 families who may need our support, and so we will be right there to do that. We'll be looking at some of our business partners to join us, to join us and in supporting those families who are in need at this time. Uh, we also would like to say thank you to Sodexo. So we have Sodexo out in the audience today, and they graciously donated several items for school supplies for our students. So there were paper and notebooks and glue sticks and pens and crayons, lots of things that students need to get started for the school year. We'll also be out in the community doing a few drives so that we can collect school supplies for students who need them across the district. We'll be doing that. And uh, it has just been a wonderful opportunity to get out there, to support uh, our community, but to have some conversation with folks as well about what they feel their priorities are. So my door is open. My listening tour continues for the next couple of months. And I'm excited to report that. It's been good. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, next on it will be the executive team, Mr. Poluski. Good evening. Uh, just a, a, a few things that I would like to uh, recognize from curriculum instruction. Uh, number one, uh, we have been uh, doing a variety of school visits uh, with the superintendent. Uh, been meeting central office staff, uh, front office staff, uh, principals. Uh, we've hit, I uh, believe, most of uh, half of our schools uh, since Dr. Kane has arrived. Uh, so it's one of the first things that were on her list was to visit summer programs, uh, which we have done, uh, especially up in the Southersville area. We also had the opportunity to visit the Summer Youth Academy, which is very new at Washington College, uh, which was a joint effort between Queen Anne's County Public Schools and Kent County Public Schools for rising ninth graders. Uh, that uh, there's a little bit of leadership, but there's a little bit of mathematics that's in that as well and, and enrichment. Uh, the final thing I, I really want to say is that uh, we are in full speed uh, in order to open schools successfully. Uh, our curriculum instruction staff that I've been meeting with uh, on a regular basis, one-on-one, -on -one, see where they are in their programs, uh, wrapping up uh, their curriculum writing and their assessment writing, uh, but their shift now is in professional development. So we're preparing for our Leadership Institute that will take place uh, August 15th, 16th, and 17th, and then uh, the week after that will be new teachers, and then the week after that uh, all of our staff is on board. So uh, we're prepared and ready to open schools successfully. Great, thank you. <coughs> Mr. Farley or Ms. Langraff? No, other than the fact that we're hustling to fill all the positions, especially the classroom positions in preparation for the school year to begin. I want to thank Dr. Kane for her leadership and vision. Uh, moving toward implementation of more and more professional development, uh, as well as implementing a new benefit system, uh, which is uh, straining our limits to some extent, and training folks on policies and procedures that have come out in the interim. Great, thank you. Ms. Langraff, anything to add? No? Okay. Um, next on the agenda is the citizen participation public comment. Did anybody? No names? No names are listed. Anybody that arrived late would like to participate in the citizen participation? If not, that's fine. Um, moving on to the student members report, and Sarah, we were only here, so. <laughs> Queen Anne's will be hosting their homecoming the first weekend of October. SGA meetings for the school begin the first week of school every Friday after school in Mr. College's room until 4 o'clock. Queen Anne's also hosts regional SGA meetings every other Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. in Mr. College's room. Regional SGA consists of Talbot County, Caroline County, and Queen Anne's County Middle and High Schools. 
Queen Anne's aims to hold a General Assembly on the second Saturday of December. General Assemblies invite all middle and high school SGA officers and delegates in the state of Maryland to our own school for leadership training and to listen to a guest speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, we have the presentations. Our first presentation is the end of year transportation report. Good evening. This is George, Good evening. fellow board members, um, Superintendent Dr. Kane. I am Margaret Ellen Kalmanovich, Supervisor of Transportation, and I will be presenting the transportation report for the 2016 17 school year. Oops. The purpose of transportation is to provide safe, timely, efficient transportation that can really contributes to a positive learning environment through staff and drivers committed to excellence and continuous improvement. Our objective with this continuous improvement is looking at comparisons within the state, year over year comparative trends, looking at fact sheets cost effectiveness for regular and special education, our routing efficiency, the safety, drivers, and looking at county comparisons. We have a number of audits, legislative and MSDE, and these are, we have so many different items that we have to be responsible for that I've just listed them here. With this, uh, these audits uh, operating efficiently uh, and effectively is very important for everyone. We do a number of ride-along audits of our routes. 20% is what our goal is at this point. We review the summary sheet submitted by the companies <coughs> along with the calculation sheet submitted by the contractors within the companies. We review the routes that are planned and what is actually completed and, um, and compared to what was submitted. And it's very important for us to make sure <coughs> to verify what uh, has been submitted. With this uh, also, uh, we look at the number of miles each year that we travel and just see where we are from year to year. The one reason I put the school days here is because if you just look at miles um, some, day, some years, we have more snow days and some of the days we don't have school, so it doesn't come out, um, you know, there are changes. So we keep that in mind, at, you know, as we look at our program. A comparison with school days two, with the driver and attendant hours. And uh, you can see a lot of this depends on programs, as I'll talk about uh, later in the presentation that we have that sort of draw, that do drive transportation. 2017 compared to physical year 2016, our special needs buses, we had two less than the previous year uh, because of some of the programming that we were able to compact. Uh, and this year we're seeing that some of the uh, needs are going to be expanded. The contractor route buses we're at 73, no change. Over the past few years, we have decreased the number of route buses. So we are at the point now that we continue to look at ways that we can do things effectively uh, with our existing fleet that we have. The spare activity buses uh, was decreased by one. The six paid contractors, uh, no change there. Unpaid contractors, there are six, one additional from the previous year. On the county that the spare buses, even though they're unpaid, we still pay, or we still have, the county puts in the radio, camera, strobe lights, crossing gates, and does inspections for these. They're there, so we have additional ones if contractors need them or enable, uh, enable us to have field trips covered that the schools uh, would like to take. 
The county also has spare buses. We do a lot of the athlete, we do all the athletic trips and uh, also have spare buses for the regular routes that we have along with the special needs programs. Uh, this particular year we had some replacement buses that came in mid-year so the numbers look a little different just because we hung on to them till the end of the year and then sold them at the end when they were finished their service. The number of companies um, no change with um, that that help, uh, supply transportation. The number of students transported you can look here uh, last year we were about at the same number as we were back in 2013. Uh, as far as the operating budget, we're still in the process of getting all the numbers together. For that, we know it will have increased this past year because of the, uh, the bus contract. Cost effectiveness, uh, we look at the funding. This is comparing it to other counties. Um, we do not have, the fact book is uh, sent out by MSDE. Uh, they have not submitted yet the year 15-16. They run about two years behind. But um, we like to look at this. You can see where Queen Anne's County is here in the blue at $899 per person and um, next to it $943 was Kent County and then $994 was Worcester, and $860 was Caroline County. So we look at this and look at trends and then see um, you know, where we are compared to others. Um, as far as bus safety, this past year we had four um, accidents that fit the, D, um, the Comar regulations. Comar changed on March 27th of this year from the 1,500 to the 3,000. So we had four that fit that criteria. We had a total of 13 accidents, and we had nine that were preventable and four that were non-preventable. Also, the fact book, um, this information we do send in, and I know what my information is, not what all the other counties' information is at this point, but uh, we have 143 <coughs> total certified drivers uh, in our county. And you can see we've been you know, running in the, um, either the high 140s <coughs> you know, to 150 range. The school bus evaluations, which is another item under Comar that we have to do at the minimum once every two years. We, uh, this past year, did 70% a hundred evaluations of air drivers and as you can see um, we have increased that you know over the years. The experience of air drivers um, you can see that with more than 10 years we have 61 of the 143 drivers. If you look over at the age of air drivers we can see we have 70 that were at 29 uh, or 29 drivers that are over 70 and 65, 9, 60, 25. So we watch this closely too because we have to continue to look at ways um, to train additional drivers to possibly fulfill the needs that we'll continue to have over the next number of years. All of our drivers are very important to us, but every year we honor one at the gala, and this happened to be Sharon Porter, one of, an outstanding bus driver who had 24 years of service, like many of our drivers have um, many years, but she is special to us. County drivers, we have 19 regular drivers for special needs runs. They are trained as drivers and attendants. What we found with the shortage that we were having, we then added attendants last year, and we still have um, substitute bus drivers for them. Uh, we have 326 regular disabled runs each day, along with the other items that were listed here. And um, along with that, air drivers do the uh, field trips in athletics. These are some other uh, community-based areas that the uh, special needs drivers also service on a daily basis. 
We do pre-employment training of students and Queen Anne's County Public Schools collaborates regionally with Talbot, Kent, Caroline, and Dorchester counties. We take our students to the Chesapeake College and the Benedictine Employee, um, Supported Employment Training Center in Easton. Uh, and then we also are working uh, with this pre-employment training at Chesapeake College. And I just wanted to include this information because it's important for us to be doing this for our students. And the other important part is we don't get any return of money from any sources. It is you know, something else that we're doing for our students. We have a number of uh, schools <coughs> that we service outside of the county on a daily basis and a lot of these also during the summer. Uh, we also have uh, this past year had five homeless students transported. Uh, we were fortunate within the county this year. Um, some years that can be, be different and that isn't really in our budget. It ends up uh, coming out of the county, line, um, county drivers additional time or mileage or the contractors depending on just how we can service those needs. Again, uh, the homelessness with McKinney Vento is something that we um, you know, have to um, do and uh, for our students. Just a little note on our county special needs drivers. We do a lot of CPR first aid training with them so they have the full certification uh, and also special needs safe schools training through MABE that we do with them. Bus evacuation drills, it's something we do with all of our buses, but we started in 2014-15 with our athletic buses. Some of these students may not be on a bus on a regular basis. They may drive to school, so we wanted to make sure they were covered. We also have a program opt-out that has decreased with this past school year compared to other school years, but we're certainly continuing with it that's when parents let us know if they don't need bus transportation so we can hopefully um, plan air routes more effectively um, so we don't have buses riding down the road with minimal number of students on it, but we need parents help in order to um, do this. Uh, just another safety item that I just is important, um, mirror placement on the buses. We have this located at three schools that we keep painted and uh, also have someone go help the drivers at times uh, if they want to make sure their mirrors are done uh, properly. We have um, a very important group that meets two times a year, the Transportation Advisory Committee, uh, made up of parents, administrators, police, bus contractors, transportation, and other police agencies. Uh, at, originally, it started to look at budget uh, deficits, but we also have look at safety. Um, uh, this past May, we always reevaluate how the school year went and the look at the <coughs> weather delays that we've had, and we recommended another continuing with the 90 minute delay at that meeting. These are some of the items that we bring up, and people bring us information from the various agencies at the meeting and seeing how this would impact transportation. We do a lot of school bus reviews and this is um, looking at um, with administrators, parents, bus company representatives, we look at the bus routes that <coughs> we have. We've met at all these particular dates and I put them there just because it's been a lot of meetings with a lot of um, administrators from each school, but the important part here is the number of the bus contractors, the bus company representatives that attended each and every one of these meetings and understood what the schools wanted and what we needed to look at as far as meeting their needs plus looking at efficiency uh, for the routes. Uh, the transportation staff meetings, it's important for us to be knowing where we're going, what initiatives that we have, and look at timelines in order to accomplish things. The violations of the eight-way flashing lights on school buses was um, really important to us. We started collecting data, and when we did, um, people are reporting 
they're either reporting more or the violations are happening more often. And um, so with this, this is what made us start to look at the American Traffic Solutions, a program uh, with cameras on buses to um, catch those people going through the lights. And we're still working with them closely and the Sheriff's Office in order to um, come up with, uh, to possibly start the program within this school year. And um, <coughs> it's real close. Uh, again, uh, these were some of the initiatives. InfoFinder LE training, um, that is uh, data that's information from air transportation system that is available to all the schools that they uh, can go in and uh, print off the routes for everyone uh, if they need to. And it's been a real asset, particularly if there is a need, a bus accident, and they need to make sure they know exactly who's on the bus. That information is at their fingertips. We've done flagger training this past year. We removed switches from the bus cameras. We also did a lot of flyers and banners, and these are just some that you've seen probably around the county, and uh, they have been effective. We have revised the website this past year. These are some of the items that are on it. Again, the InfoFinder LE, that was really a huge thing with all the schools and the staff and the bus drivers knowing the importance of having current and up-to-date information. In conclusion, the evaluation of our routes are for efficiency, safety, and economy will be ongoing. Uh, we'll continue to work closely with the police. We certainly um, are cons very concerned about the vehicles passing the red flashing lights and want to do whatever we can um, in order to help with that problem. We'll continue to work closely with the special education and student support departments to look at possible solutions for savings and transportation, but we have to still meet the program needs. Uh, the information about the bus schedules, we'll continue to look at that, but also look at ways that we can inform parents more about when their buses are arriving, uh, that's an, but we have to have the correct information to begin with, and drivers have got to give us the information. We're, we're getting there, and we're hoping next year uh, that's one of our goals to move forward more with that. Um, contact information um, on the website, and there's our phone number. And certainly um, the Transportation Department depends on a lot of people to make things work smoothly. The school staff are instrumental, the secretaries, you know, keeping up with who's on what bus, the, um, the county and uh, contractor bus drivers, the bus contractors, central office staff, the transportation staff, administrators. It's a team effort, and with that, it's, uh, that's only possible because of that. I would m mention we have one bus contractor with us, Lawrence Chenaud. And he has been at every one of those meetings, the long list <laughs> up there. Right, and we out. appreciate, I, hit, I didn't miss anybody, did I? <laughs> you know. But um, it's, it's an ongoing effort. It's um, having an efficient transportation system is um, ongoing. Needs change within the school system, and you have to keep uh, watching that. Any questions? No. Do you have any questions? I have one. Yes. Um, I know when I first <clears throat> years ago brought my son in for fifth uh, kindergarten, and then also when he moved into middle, there, the only way I don't know how you work it now, but the only way I knew what, where the bus was and when it was coming was in the Bay Times. Um, what method do we have now to inform people what bus their kids come going to take and what time they'll be in the vicinity of their house? Uh, well, years ago, you're correct, it was in the newspaper. And then we, we took it, along with other jurisdictions, started taking it out of the newspaper because you didn't want um, the routes readily available uh, in the newspaper for, uh, for very safety reasons. So then what we changed is we put it on the website. And uh, on the website, it's only up for a specified amount of time. It's available at the schools. 
with the InfoFinder LE that I had there, the schools, oftentimes they would be flipping through the routes as you were to try to tell someone if they called what school uh, their child, they can go in now and see what bus is assigned. And also the bus information, because uh, parents, um, what we have is only as good as the information that we receive too. So updates with information, and that's where our challenge always is in transportation. Um, what, um, the one thing that I said as far as getting information out to parents, that's something that we would like to be able to do um, either in the future, piloting in a school next year with um, a postcard. You know, this is the bus you are assigned to. This is the bus driver's phone number, that, that kind of thing. There's lots of different programs out there now um, in the future that we'll be looking at, like bus stop, where's your bus stop, where parents could have an app to see where their bus was on the route to put in. So the technology is moving, but we have to have accurate routes to begin with. Okay, so I, so I recommend though to parents now that maybe we need to get a hold of the new local newspapers and be sure they advertise to have them go to our website to actually, that's the one way they know now is by the website, right? Yes. Especially new kindergartners. Uh, and uh, the first, uh, the week prior to school opening, lots of parents are going to open, house, particularly elementary school and middle school students, and they have all the information at the school there too, you know, for the parents to get it. Okay. I also believe that a lot of bus drivers directly call their route parents. Yes. They notify them where the stop is, what time to expect them within a time frame. Yes. I'm assuming that they get their list a little ahead of time. I've heard wonderful things about that on Ken Island. I can't speak for the rest of the county, but um, I'm seeing I can, some I can speak for Queen Anne's um, County. That's also a really good communication system you guys have. I saw a lot of that verbalized last year, How and not only that, that the bus driver was very open with giving their number out and the parent calling them. Yeah. So I didn't see any complaints about that last year. Um, and on the website with the bus route is the phone number and to the, the bus driver. Right. And right. Um, so, you know, they are good at, you know, calling them. Yep. Um, and particularly the elementary and middle. I say the younger middle. children, their parents really appreciate that because they might not have been on a bus yet. They don't know the driver. Um, I was fortunate enough for years and years, my kids had the same bus driver, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Porter, Mrs. Coleman. You know, it was a regular routine, but um, there was always that new person that didn't know, and the bus driver was very good about calling that parent. Well, and that's certainly her. good good to hear, I too. I just wanted to add mm -hmm. that because uh, that's been my I'm glad you did. my feedback. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions? No? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The next presentation on the agenda is the expenditure report. This is um, the standard, <clears throat> excuse me, the standard expenditure report that you um, have been receiving each month. Um, this one is only 27 days into our new fiscal year, so there's not a lot of information on here. Um, I did want to point out, if you look at the, um, there's report number one, which basically gives you a summary by category and what has been spent, and then report number two breaks that down into the different um, objects, supplies, contracted services. Um, so I just wanted to point out to you, on the second report, you'll notice that in certain categories, salaries seem to be um, spent already. We have 98 percent of salaries spent in um, administration and really what that is is it's obligating those salaries for those people for the entire fiscal year. Um, you'll notice under instructional salaries that only four percent has been spent and that's because most of those folks are 10-month employees and those salaries really won't kick in until September. So um, if you have any questions on the report I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions? No, we're good. Thank you, Robin. Uh huh. Next item is the 2017-2018 Queen Anne's County Public School calendar revision. 
Good evening, board members. Uh, I would ask for your indulgence as we found an error in our uh, last calendar, which was that we had on October 18th that schools would be closed for half day due to PSAT testing and professional development. That PSAT testing was actually scheduled for October 11th, and we've made that amendment to the proposed calendar that you have on board docs. Okay, so do we need to make a motion to approve the new revised 2017-2018 school calendar? I move that we um, approve the revised 2017-2018 school calendar. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Motion to second. Any questions or comments regarding the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote to approve the 2017-18 school calendar. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. I have one question about that. Has that gone out to parents yet? No. No. Okay. okay. No. It, pending okay. board approval. Very good. Then we'll send it out tomorrow. Okay, we have scheduled on our agenda a break. I don't know if we need it. If anyone does, we can surely take it. All right, moving on then. Um, to the action items, the HR report. I believe we need a motion to approve the HR report as presented in closed session. So moved. Second. No motion and second. Any questions or comments regarding the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote to approve the HR report as presented in closed session. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Next was the transportation report. Uh, I move that we approve the purchase of the bus by Mr. Joe Wheeler as, some, as presented in closed session. I have a motion to have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments regarding the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote to approve the purchase of a bus by Mr. Joe Wheeler as presented in closed session. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Um, next on the agenda is the second round of citizen participation public comment. If anybody would like to come forward and make a comment, please feel free to do so. If, if not, we'll be moving on to future meeting events. Uh, looks like August 14th we have a superintendent meet and greet at Sellersville Middle School from 6 to 7 p.m. Um, August 15th to 17th there's a leadership institute at Prospect Bay Country Club, 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Uh, I believe August 16th is the, uh, we the, we amended that because we were, we were having a school board work session and it has been canceled. August 24th, or I'm sorry, August 21st is the new teacher luncheon at Centerville Middle from 12.15 to, I believe, what, one or two. It, right. <clears throat> it's usually one or two hours. August 21st as well is another superintendent meet and greet at Stevensville Middle School from 6 to 7.30. And September 6th we have um, board member training with MABE at 2.30 and our regularly scheduled board meeting um, for the month of September. That concludes our meeting. Can I have a motion to um, close open session? I motion we close. A second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments regarding the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote to close open session. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you and good night.